Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, to the 5050 Take It or Leave It podcast. Ooh, very booming. I like Where that. tonight, it's not Matt doing the intro, it's Mitch. <laughs> that, was that your Matt impression? Was that? What? Yeah, yeah, it was. Okay, I mean, it was, it was <laughs> a little there. Guess... There was uh, some my own touches, you oh, know, yeah, radio and announcing, yeah. yeah. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Exactly, so. and we all know how much I love Matt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Oh, but tonight... Tonight we are going to discuss a little backstory on yeah. both Oberyn and Zion. Yeah, we're going to get really in depth about who our characters are. Yeah, give, the, give you guys a little bit of insight about who we are. Kind of director's cut, I'd say. Yeah, kind of a little behind the scenes of how we kind of came up with our characters and a mm-hmm. little bit about what our goals and motivations are. We get a little deep too about um, a little bit of backstory. So. Yeah, yeah. So it gets a little, little too deep, but exactly. <laughs> well. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. I suppose, Kyle, let's get into it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And our session is getting a little. It's out. There's a lot of different storylines kind of going. Well, at, at yeah. Now that we've moved past, yeah, mine kind yeah. of. <laughs> like, finally, the the motivations of a lot of things have started to kind of come through. Yep. Um, whether it's in one on ones individually between like the characters, but like player knowledge, a lot of like the cracks. Or not a lot, but there are some cracks showing in a lot of characters. Right. We were, it was so difficult when we first started not to tell people, like, yeah. what you were. Because we didn't even talk about, like, what we were. No. All we, I had a sneaking suspicion that either Liz and I's character were either the same race or the same class. Turns mm-hmm. out we were the same class with the subclass the same, which was pretty dope. That's but, actually completely, like, Super coincidental too to have something like that happen. Right, like yeah. Like you, two, two rangers, who Both are beast also master. beastmasters. Like that is, which is before like the update that came out a couple months ago. The yeah. beastmaster class still wasn't that great. Like it, right. I'll I'll be honest. Matt helped fix it, so yeah, it's it works really well for us right. both. But but like at the beginning, it wasn't. No, not even that. But like if you just play it like a normal ranger. There's a lot of, like, either you go or your beast goes. Like, there's no mm. dual going. Like, ah, y- yeah. your initiative is your beast. Or so, basically, you get to choose who fights. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. Yep. And when you get up in that upper ranger yeah. level, then, then you can start... Doing, like, dual stuff. Dual stuff, yeah. yeah. But until that point, that doesn't Ooh. happen. Right. Yeah. And um, as as we've kind of progressed through this campaign, I've I've... Heard and seen a lot of things between characters, um, mostly like Edwin and Leofa <laughs> has some moments. I mean, remember when we first saw them, they were performing together. Right, they were performing together. So they had to have known each other at some point to be performing. Or they were just like, yeah, we're both here in this tavern. So Making let's money. Play. Which is also yeah. kind of coincidental. but And uh, also like... Timeless Brazil, Silvana, you know, the, whatever she decides, whatever to she be. decides to be in that week, you get this. You, she doesn't like show a lot. No, she doesn't. Very but reserved. There have been at least player knowledge outside of the game, like moments where you're like, huh, okay, like, well, there's Zion's got, I think, a good grasp. Yeah, on her, not a great grasp. Like you've talked to her. Yeah, yeah, and I think out of. Everyone in the party, uh, Edwin talks to her the most, and then you, and then I think Leofa. Yeah. And she's tried talking to me once or twice. Yep. But we were kind of interrupted by some incidents. And <laughs> Arthur sometimes, you know, it's, but that's, yeah. it is how it is in a, in a group, you know. Well, it's a big group. Yeah. And st- even like looking at the characters and kind of like where they come from. You know, like, oh, yeah, there's, there's some shades of this character that I see in your character. Oh, yeah. Like, with yours, uh, f- the biggest one for me would probably be Zuko from Avatar. <laughs> you, yeah. There are some, there, there are just hardcore vibes that I get 
from that. Well, where, like, yeah. casted out Prince, told to accomplish his undaunting task to yeah. gain a re uh, acceptance back into said kingdom. Yeah, it it it's basically Zuko's line, and you know what's actually funny. Mm. about that Kyle is I took no inspiration from Zuko at all like when creating mm. this character with Matt yeah or creating the character and then taking it to Matt and us really fleshing that out my inspirations was from Hercules ooh Hercules, okay yep and then um because I really like Norse mm. Norse mythology and Greek mythology those those, are, those yeah. two are just so I really like those two those yeah really and good. I think D&D &D yeah. pulls a lot from both of those yeah Obviously, yeah. so and then so Hercules was an inspiration, um, coming from more of the trials and tribulations yep. that Zion has to go through, yep. um, to gain, to gain honor. And it, it's not so much Hercules, it's similar to Hercules, and like you have to get these to get this power. It's more of a you have to get through this to prove that you can be trustworthy. If yeah. that makes sense, to kind of show that you're not just a you know bastard child. <laughs> to it and to put it. Like this to gain honor because he's a half yeah. elf. So yeah. one of the things that go along with being a half elf is that honor. Well, like, just being looked up down upon by the elf community because you're not full elven. Yeah, you're kind of an outcast. Yeah, yeah, so you have to. Zion is attempting to, in his father's gracefulness, mm -hmm. given the opportunity to show um, that he can be worthy. Yeah. But on, honestly, the task that he was given uh, is not. It is extremely daunting. Did and I, almost ha, have you ever have I told you guys the task? Uh, I don't think so. It, oh, it's such a beautiful task, Matt and I. I told Matt I was like, so this is. He he knows the lay of the land a lot better, right? And um, obviously, once we get into this, this is like straight up player knowledge. Yeah. So yeah. don't like. No, I'm not gonna. Right. Hey, yo, guys, you're never gonna believe what he just told me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um. But so you know, um, the dominion goes quite a ways. Yeah. But yeah. the the continent that we're on goes like, a, uh, a oh, lot. there's a lot more. Um, yeah. I haven't seen a map of the entire continent, but I'm imagining like a North America, South America type situation. Okay. And okay. so that Earthbreakers Pass, I'm pretty sure. That's like the uh, yeah. That's the part. That's the place where you guys were like, in the throes of obtaining at least last time i heard or you guys already got it or something like that what do you mean i remember um i think it was in the war room with the dominus and you saw like earthbreakers pass and it had all those things in it right so like the you guys were setting up to go yeah so <laughs> the earthbreakers pass is a divide mm -hmm. um it's a it's obviously a very treacherous mountain range and, right and whatnot right. but the reason the dominion doesn't go past that is because there's actually a southern a southern Elven Kingdom Ooh, passed it. it. Yep, and um, that kingdom is uh, is uh, very more nature based. Okay, so so like wood elves, in a sense. similar. Yeah, they they embrace nature a lot more. In, I mean, you saw it in the Dominion where there's it, there's buildings, there's industrial, uh, it, very industrialized. Yeah. Uh, there's um, ab uh, oh, what is the water thing called? Oh, you're talking about the aqueducts. The aqueducts. Yes, There's yes, aqueducts. Yes. Aqueducts in the in the capital mm. and very just modernized and uh, right. Being in the Dominion, like there's nature and bracefulness, but we just don't. It doesn't surround our lives. Right. Whereas, Whereas the in other the ones Southern are, Elven Kingdom are very nature based. Yes. So they're like a like a tribe more than it is more a so a tribe than a kingdom. Correct. Okay. Okay. So I was given the undauntful task of <laughs> going down to the Southern Kingdom mm -hmm. and telling them, "Hey, take care of this shit. It's starting to invade our part of the continent, ah. and if you don't, we're gonna come fuck you up." So essentially, you were sent. As a messenger to this kingdom to tell them, um, like, do your job or die? Me messenger slash more so tell them to do this or don't come back. Ah, so you you were the, the line of, like, this this is a warning, and if I have to, I will I'll kill people, essentially. Yep. Okay. I, that is a daunting it, task. Yeah. Uh, so much. That, yeah. Uh, and the, the funny part is, is um... Well, you know, I'm very like winter snow, mm -hmm. white orientated, which is very different from the a southern <laughs> southern nature. Kingdom. A lot of green and yeah. yeah. 
So, yep. I mean, freezing an entire forest area wouldn't be extremely bad, especially now that you kind of have the ability to, you know. Oop. Yep. Control but no, dragons. so so the idea was, is, um, and this gets into the backstory now. Um, yep. So, after I'm. After the, after the full, uh, after Zeon's born, you know, it takes a couple of years, but eventually I start to notice, you know, that. You've been essentially taken <sighs> away from. Yeah, like I don't get all the personal trainings with the Dominus and I don't take as many classes and I don't get as much. Attention. Attention, yeah. I slowly start seeing that dwindle and um, at, yeah. at some point he just, my Dominus is just like, okay. Yeah. This is your job now. Go take care of it or don't come back. So he's essentially and turned you from like, yeah, you're my only son to, well, now I have a real son. So if you die in this mission, it, I, it's I, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. He, he basically told me to take care of this undoable task of telling this kingdom to fuck off. Yeah. And you won't get there so because you're <laughs> one person, so good fucking luck. Yeah. And if you do that... <laughs> great. That's a great but win for I, me. I don't care because I... Yeah, could, eventually we're going to get there. So either you do it for us or you die. Yeah. So, and I said, fuck that to both of them. I just went, I went farther north. Yeah. Um. So you, so you left. I left. Yeah, I, I did leave, Um. obviously. Yeah. I left and then I, um. this is really getting into it, Uh. <laughs> but... I I went north um to that mountain range that um I think Cerulean had that mm-hmm. floating lab up on or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I recognized the mountain range because I had been there before mm-hmm. and I had to tre- 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 trekked through there ah. with um the hopes and aspirations to Basically, assemble a a northern army, essentially like. So, like you wanted to us to have an army of your own, yeah. To kind of go snow at, giants, dire wolves, right, right, all which, that which makes, stuff, which makes sense. So that's why you got. I, I got Una. Una. That's how I got such a good beast. Is because, because you went, that was my so start. F- you went so far in there, you found Una, and then you brought her back. Yeah, and that that was the extent of it. Yeah. Like, like after that, you were like, I don't think I have the the will to continue in this. Not the will. I just there were other things, right, that needed to happen for me to continue on. Okay. Okay. So, but yeah, that's how that's how it fits in, and that Matt really liked how I did that. So yeah, no, it's a it's a compelling story. It's a but, sense of I I was once you know, revered and respected. And now I'm being essentially disowned, thrown out to die by mm-hmm. my own dad. And you know what? I, I'm not going to take that. And the and do you know what the, the funny thing is? The goal mm-hmm. was to, the goal still is, well, not this, the same goal. The goal's kind of changed a mm-hmm. little bit, kind of. But the goal was to obtain an ice dragon yeah. and, and not go to the southern kingdom. But to go to your... It, Dad. But to go to the the capital and and show off and yeah show off destroy it a little bit yeah you wanted ma- to kind of um take take my frost or take my snow army yeah and not go to the southern kingdom which I would have accomplished what I wanted but then you, then you're I'm doing back. it for the dominance you're yeah, not doing at that it because point, then you I'm, want to do it exactly I yeah. want to go screw over the yeah. the capital okay no I I get that you're <laughs> you were essentially doing um. At least I'm getting, like, vibes of, and for the people who've watched Game of Thrones, you'll probably get this, too. But, spoiler alert, too, if you haven't. But it's when Daenerys, with her dragon, goes into uh, essentially taking out Cersei and stuff. And they're, like, ringing the bell for surrendering. And Daenerys is like, uh, no. And then just proceeds to destroy the whole city. Which is something she wouldn't do. And it also kind of pissed me off because I was like, she wouldn't do that. She wouldn't do that. But um, I'm kind of getting vibes of that with yours because you're like, yeah. yeah, I could do that. But I, I've i had so much pent-up rage over yep. my dad, over this stupid stout guard family lineage and whatever the fuck. And I'm going to do what I want. And what I want is to destroy it, which is why it also kind of comes into like you want to destroy it. But I also feel like you want to rebuild it after it's destroyed. Oh, yeah. Where to you're like, I want 100%. Like, I want this to be 
my stout guard. Like, yeah, you know, like this is me. Like, it's not. This was passed down from everyone before me. I have completely erased them from the history books, and now it is my time to create a whole entirely Reset new button. End. It's it's just, yeah, clean slate. This is my empire, and I'm going to do whatever I want with it. I'm not going to follow in my dad's footsteps. I'm going to trek my own path. And rebuild it from the ground. Stupid up. elven bloodline. Get that shit out of yep. here. And I feel like at even at that point, you might be like chaotic, like chaotic evil. Well, not chaotic, but like lawful evil. But I feel like once you obtained that goal, it's like well, well then I just it. run a kingdom. Right. And I conquer shit from that point. And, and I think at that point, it'd be like the Joker with Batman. You know, like if Batman dies, then Joker's like well, I have nothing else to do. I, I feel like nothing. And I feel like that could also be a possibility for you. Yeah. It's like the Dominus and everything's gone. And you've done everything you've wanted to. And now you're just like, well, what do I do next? Right, but I didn't do it. Right. That's, you haven't that's, done it yet. That's the heart. Well, the the capital's gone, which yeah. I'm like, that's what I wanted. But it's not the what you wanted. <laughs> but I didn't do it. And Cerulean even said at the last minute was like, you were going to end up just like him. You know, click, click, boom. So I'm essentially taking away what is essentially your goal from you because you wanted the dominion. You wanted to destroy it. Yeah. But you also wanted something to build upon. Like you wanted to take out. It seems like you wanted to take out like what was wrong with it. Yep. And insert yourself and make it better. Yep. But Cerulean was like, how about you just don't do that? And then proceeded to just destroy everything. So now you have really nothing to build. So you have to start building from the ground up. Yep. And that gives, I, I believe, Zion a problem because it's like, well, I got what I wanted, but it wasn't what I wanted to happen. Yeah. So now I, I'm stuck. Right. Right. And I think... That's that's essentially what my... Character is going through. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Okay. It, and it, it's it's hard because it's hard obviously the goals and aspirations are going to change through the campaign because oh, yeah. that's what it's focused on. And, yeah, yeah. you know... That might change over the next two sessions. It might take it could. 15, it could. 20 more sessions. It, it could definitely, a lot can change. Yeah, I mean, so. Zion wasn't expecting to come across the ability to do magic. Right. He was going to have the work of other magic users work for him. Yeah. And yeah. just take the ability that the Dominus gave him to lead. Right. And instill that. Okay. And use that to ger- command others. Yeah, and I think that kind of feeds into your aspect. Because now I'm getting it. And it's like, your your aspect kind of goes with, I feel like aspects go with utmost desires. Of course they do. Like Right, right yeah. And that's why they asked, what do you want? But there's a <laughs> deeper meaning to it. Like, it gives me more to think about who the character is. Like, why they have this. So, like... With you, you're the aspect of conquest. And I think the reason why you want this so badly is because all your life, you were respected at one point until Mm. you weren't respected. And now you're at this low where you're like, I want respect. You know, like I, I can take over things. I just want to be acknowledged and respected, even if that means I have to force people to respect and acknowledge who I am. Well, when you say it like that, it sounds shitty, but it, it kind it, of... It's That's why you're lawful evil. It's like, I... Respect me or die. Yeah. It's like, I want respect because for a while I was happy, and for a while I was respected. My dad and and people, well, not not as much, but you were still, like, at, at the time, you are like, yeah, I am my father's I was, son. I was being room to take over the throne. Yeah, and, you, and you're like, I'm going to get, even as a half-elf, I'm getting the respect that I deserve, and I'm getting, as a dominus. and I'm going to become dominus, and I'm going to change how the world is, and I'm going to make changes and stuff like that, and then it's essentially ripped away from you by your yep. pure-blooded half-brother. It's fucking Zeon. So, now Why do you think I was so happy when he exactly. fucking died? And so now you're at this point where you've you have like a twisted version of it now where it's like, I have been, it has been stolen from me. And it has like, it's been stolen from me. My respect 
my acknowledgement, my goals, my dreams, it has all been taken from me because of the fact that I am a half elf. Yep. You know, it's like, it's not even, it's not even the fact that I am a good soldier. I am a great, I could be a great leader. You have the best qualities for the job, but because you are a half elf, you can't amount to anything. Mm -hmm. And now you have the aspect of conquest where it's like, well, now you can make people see that, you know, you can have people acknowledge you and respect you. And if they don't, you have the power to, to take them out. <laughs> right. Which is something that he, it, I feel like maybe Zion might have conflicting issues, but at the same time, he's like, this is something that I've wanted because I had this and now I don't. And this is a great way to get it back. Yep. But maybe Zion over time will start to question. Well, and that's why Matt, went, well, when Matt said like, you know, it surprised me on some of you that took it. I was not one of the people that, that he, he would be surprised about. Yeah, he knew that's because he knew your story. Yeah, he and knew. so he knew you would take it. Yeah, right. I think, and that also he was surprised that you took it. I mean, it worked out for you. It worked out for me because but there it, it are, was your patron. It was my yeah. That's why I took it because I was like, which you know what? I I think it's time to flip the switch <laughs> to talk a little bit. I was gonna say about, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's get a little so, into you. Let's talk about you, right. baby. So, yeah. I took the aspect because my patron, because me and my patron have had a relationship, not like lovey dovey, not like that, but we've, it's been tenuous. Yes. And I've known him for a long time. So in session, I've mentioned moments in the dream of Cerulean, when she asked me, what do I want? And I said, I wanted to change my fate and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, there could be a lot of meanings to it. Yeah, it's uh, pretty vague. It could be, it's not like how I want to die or things like that. It's more like I wish I can change things that have happened to me, you know? But he knows with time magic, you change one thing and sh shit starts to hit the fan, you know? Yep. And so, and I also mentioned that for a while I was in the shadow fell. Right. You know? Like I've... I've been there in the Shadowfell for uh, for a while. And uh, the inspirations for my characters kind of comes from that, you know? Like, so, if I remember correctly, because I had, like, three different inspirations, like, all kind of merged into one. But I'll go with, I'll go with two. Okay. For this one. Um, one of them was from an anime. Of course it is, because I love anime. Yes. But the character... Yes, you do. The character that I wanted to kind of get inspiration from was Edward Elric from Full Metal, right? So essentially, his story kind of begins with him, his brother, and his mom, like, living happily and stuff. And their mom dies. And mm -hmm. so what they do is that uh, him and his brother Alphonse try to find a way to resurrect their mom. And so in the in that world, there's like alchemy and like th magic and stuff. Yep. And so they figure out this ritual using alchemy to kind of transmute their mom's body back to life. But it's botched, right? Mm. So because of that, and also in the, when it comes to transmutation, especially human transmutation, there's a price that has to be paid. So what happens is that they try to get their mom back and they essentially fuck up really bad, and Edward Elric loses an arm and a leg, literally, in the process, and his brother's soul gets, like, taken away. Oh, shit. And he has to transmute his brother's soul into a metal, like, into armor, into, like, metal armor. Oh, full so now metal he's like a, alchemy. So now he's, like, a walking metal man, and his and Edward now has, like, a metal leg and a metal arm because of the fact that he had to transmutate all that stuff. But that's some inspiration for my character. The yeah. other inspiration is Talion from Middle Earth Shadow of War, which is one of my great, one of my favorite games of all time. So what his story is is that he was a ranger on the Black Gate during the times of Lord of the Rings, right? Okay. A little bit before Fellowship. And it was right when Sauron starts to attack and whatnot. And they start, like, going over the Black Gate and all that and doing all that stuff with Isildur and whatnot. And 
Talion is taken by these orcs and these guys who work for Sauron, and he basically him and his family dies. They kill their whole his whole family, and then they like slit his throat, and they essentially are trying to do this ritual to call back the original ring bearer Celebrimbor to like bond with Sauron so they can make like a new ring. Oh wow. However, in this ritual, Celebrimbor's soul bonds with Talion as he dies, making him essentially immortal and also able to communicate with Celebrimbor and use like wraith-like powers. Oh shit. It's pretty it's pretty fucking rad. And then he goes out to like dominate people and make an army to go after Sauron and he whoops ass and it's pretty cool. So we put those together and what do you get? Oberyn. Well, you get Oberyn. So his story is like this. And this is for the audience and for you and me and yeah. So Oberyn's story is a tad complicated. His dad is the emperor of the Valandrian Imperica because my name is Oberyn Valandris. And I have a brother. His name is uh, Elman, of course, or Elron, whatever you want to call him. Hmm. So we... You didn't want to do Oberyn? No. No, I didn't. So, <laughs> oh, Elmorn, right. His name is Elmorn. And our bloodline, at least when our dad and our mom got together and had us, there was a kind of a curse put upon us with our celestial blood. It was almost tainted in a way. Oh, well. And because of that tainted blood, our mom succumbs to this disease. And it's like generational. So it's passed to us. But I don't get it. But my brother gets it. And so riddled with the fact that I'm going to lose my brother as I lost my mom, I try to, I look through books of magic, of any kind of history revolving around curing these kind of like blood genetic diseases, things like that. Just going through blood magic and all that. Yep. And I find something. And I do the magic ritual, but it turns out that it wasn't a cure for a disease. It was a portal into the shadow fell. So we oh. get thrown into the shadow fell. And so we're there. You, and your mom and your brother? Just me and my brother cuz my de- oh. my mom is passed. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. And we get there, and in the Shadowfell, because it's, it's essentially hell, so you're going to meet a couple of bad things down there. Yeah. It's essentially a black desert. You know, black yep. sand, all that. And we encounter some creatures, some very vile creatures, and they take my brother, and he tells me to, like, run. Just run. Because the, the portal closed. There's no going back. Like, we're stuck in Jesus. the Shadowfell. And so my brother screams at me to run and don't look back and run because we both had ASMR powers and my brother was the more brash let's fight kind of guy mm. whereas I was the more like book heavy yep. scholar kind he was just let's fight I don't care I'm willing to protect my brother and stuff like that but in that moment you know he tells me to run and stuff the last thing I see of him is him possibly being killed in the shadow fell which is bad so yeah. I start running, and I keep running, and I keep running. I'm, it, it, it's like days pass, you know. Time passes, and I'm still in the shadow fell. And at a point, you know, I start to finally reel in what I've done. Like, in this moment, I've sent me and my brother to hell. I've indirectly killed my brother, and I'm trapped. So at this moment, Jesus. he's... So at this moment, he feels powerless, I literally have I, I literally can't do anything. Yep. I couldn't save my brother. I couldn't save my mom. I'm stuck here. I'm gonna die. That's it. Right? And I start to like sink into the sand. Jesus. Into like a bottomless pit. And that's where I meet my patron. And we essentially mm-hmm. make a deal. And I tell him, I wanna get out of here. I I need to I need to, you know, I I have to save him and stuff like that. And patron says to me, There's a way we can get out. But I need to come with you. And so we merge, like, together. He bonds oh. to me, and we're out of the Shadowfell. 
That's why when you first saw me, I had a gold eye and a, and a sapphire blue eye because I was with the patron. my patron. And then when I finally took the aspect, that blue eye finally became fully, right? Yep. Not because... Not because your eyes originally were golden. My eyes were originally golden. But then, the but then the I patron took the patron and then... Sapphire eye. Yeah. And I will say, before I made the promise to in the deal, right? So me and my brother had ASMR powers, as I said before. Mm-hmm. But they weren't like the ASMR powers that I had. We had the angel wings and, the, you know, we had that stuff. And we were kind of treated like like freaks, in a sense, because we're celestial beings, you know? And we, yep. and we weren't with our in our kingdom. We were sent out of the kingdom to do stuff. Oh, oh. Yeah, we were sent out of the kingdom with our mom. Gotcha. She succumbs to her disease and stuff, and I get out of the shadow fell. And, you know, I, I'm i completely traumatized. I'm powerless. I'm like, I made a deal, but now I don't know what to do. And you may have heard from Matt that he, my dad has sent people to come, like, after me to, like, kill me. Oh. Like, assassins and stuff. And to me, I think that's my dad's way of training me to eventually take his place. Because he is the kind of guy who makes a lot of errors, and then he kind of tests them to see if they are worthy. Hmm. And I'm at a point in Oberyn's life where that moment, when he goes to the Shadowfell, when he sees his brother and he gets kind of killed, he has a goal in mind. He doesn't want his brother to die. His brother was very, very close to him, mm-hmm. which is why in the dream, in the vessel, the first thing that anyone really heard was my dream when you see someone who looks like me say, you didn't save me because that was my oh, brother and he oh. couldn't, and I couldn't save him. And so that was my dream. See, Shit. Yeah. So that's so dope. Yeah. So my brother was like the closest thing to me and he was taken because of me. Mm -hmm. And so I've been racked with guilt and loss for a very long time. Right. And he wants to not feel that pain anymore where he's like, I don't want to feel powerless. I don't want to feel like I'm losing people again. Like I did before. I want to bring my brother back to life. I want to bring my mom back to life. You know, I want to be happy. And while I was actually in the Shadowfell, because of all that negative stuff down there, the darkness, the energies, and the and everything down there, it actually corrupted me, which is why I have bone wings and why I have... Oh, instead of, normal instead of normal f- flying wings. wings, I've been corrupted by the Shadowfell to become like this weird fallen ASMR. Because I've literally fell... F- into the depths of hell in in the sense. And he wants to be redeemed. Like, I want my brother back. I want to have the power to save my brother. I want to have the power to save people. I don't want to feel like I'm like I was when I was there in mm. the Shadowfell. Which is why he's always asking for more. Yep. Because his patron is trying, but he also knows about all kinds of shit. And now you know, why Why he meditates and why he writes in his journals that he's been feeling like this for so long that he kind of forgot how it feels to feel that way. Like, when you meet me, it's been years since. That happened. Yeah. So I, I'm at a point where I'm like, I don't, which is why I'm seen wandering around because I'm originally... Like, a, like stuff was, like, I, I went and did bounties for people. Okay, that's them. what you were doing. Yeah, and I hunted them, and I took them in, and I got coin for it. That's how I got oh, by, because I'm, okay. I'm a hunter. I'm I was like gonna, a bounty hunter. I was going to ask you, like, what are you what were you doing down in that forest? Cause I like, was essentially going for my next meal, because I was going from town to town doing, doing odd jobs and hunting mm-hmm. and stuff. But, yeah, and that's why I know so much about Arcana, because I've been trying to learn so much about anything magic-based to find out a way to essentially go back to the shadow and see if I can find my brother, which is why I've also been praying to the Raven queen to see if I can find a way for her to get me to the shadow fell without having to die. But my patron and the deep and the, the deep is like, you can't do that. 
Mm-hmm. Like you can't talk to the other gods. You can't like let them in on this. But Oberyn, well, you can't worship them. You can't guy. worship them, which is what I didn't want to really do. That's why I was asking her to like. I know I phrased it in a way, but essentially he wants a way back there to save his brother because he doesn't know whether or not he's dead. He could have survived. I don't know. I want to know. That's why he wants to change his fate. I want to save my brother. I want to essentially rewrite the mistakes that I've made. I want to atone for what I've done and rewrite what I have did to something else. Save my brother. Save my mom. Redeem myself. That kind of stuff. And his relationship with his dad isn't, like, bad, bad, but he feels a sense of resentment because, like, you left us out here. And it's because you left us out here that she's dead. And it's because you left us out here that I did my stuff. And that's why my brother's dead. Because of you. But he knows that that isn't. That it, it wasn't his dad's fault. His dad didn't do a lot of it. The disease, yeah, maybe. But I was the one who took us there. And I was the one that got my brother killed. So I'm dealing with that guilt, that grief. And the fact that it is my fault. Everything that I've done, it has been my fault. That's why I died with the tyrant's bane. That's why I want more power, because I don't want it to be my fault. I want it to be powerful. So right. I cannot make those mistakes again. You should have investigated the tyrant's bane. Yeah, if I had my, yeah, maybe. I should have seen how his weaknesses were, but that was essentially, that's essentially over. it. Mm-hmm. And for the first time, he's finally met people that maybe he can bond to, because he hasn't met anyone for a while. The closest yeah. people he had was his family, and his family is gone. <laughs> yeah. Which is why he relates to Zion so much. Because Zion and Oberyn have kind of seen their families die. Of course, in terms of yours, it's like almost a happy occasion because you didn't really like your family. Whereas for Oberyn, it's awful because yeah. I was the one who could have maybe found a way to save them, and in turn, at least my brother, and I got him killed. And that's why I couldn't save him. And so I feel powerless. But he's starting to feel more attuned to his powers. He's starting to kind of accept that I am who I am. And changing my fate is something that you can do. And I have this power to do that now. So Hmm. that is Oberyn's story. Yeah. It's deep enough to be like, well, yeah, and that's why he doesn't talk about it much. He doesn't like talking about Past mistakes, you know? Should have Ed- Edwin try talking to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> We'd get too deep, and it'd be, it'd be a lot. Because <laughs> yeah. you have his family trauma and my family trauma. and Yeah, very But similar. essentially, yeah, it is a lot of baggage for Oberyn, and that's why he never talks about anything regarding that kind of stuff. He, if you mention his family or something like that, he doesn't really want to talk about it. Right. Which is why he really wants to go to the Sky Ward, because... Who else in his family is left? His dad. He's the only one left in his family. And so he needs to, he wants to go and like see him and tell him what had happened. And mm-hmm. Like you have to help me. And also to help him and tell him about, I've seen shit. <laughs> I've seen multiverses and the, the, the darkness is coming to kill us all and things like that. But he won't say it like that, but right, he's going, no. he's trying to get back to see if he can reconcile with his dad and see if he can, like, get him to help in some way, shape, or form. But that is essentially, that's essentially the the whole thing with Oberyn. For the first time heard on the 50-50 podcast, right. too. Yeah, so. Well, and it's, for Zion, it was a little fucky, too, because, like, character-wise, I had consciously made the decision to accept being the prince again, which is something that Zion doesn't, but he's coming to terms with it. Yeah, he's got to come to terms with it because it's just it's gonna ha- it's got to happen. It's either he dies or he becomes a prince. Right. But I think that's the power of being an aspect. You have the ability to change things. Yeah. Which is why Cerulean was so adamant to not having you be like that because she was like, "I'm not gonna make you become the dominus, and then you just end up like your dad." Because she's probably seen that happen before. Probably. And she probably knows it ends very badly. So why not just erase the whole thing? <laughs> Just I want to get started. to that dragon. Yeah. Well, we will. We will. It'll come up quicker than we think. Oh, yeah. So I do want to kill the kill the basilisks, yeah. though. Which is coming up, hopefully. 
Yeah. I am excited to see what comes up next. Yeah, I think that's a good place, though, to wrap up this uh, special 50-50 episode. Yes, sir. Where you get a little insider look on Oberyn and Zion. Yeah. Um, there was no Matt tonight, and we just thought, well, let's make the best of it and talk about... Mm-hmm. Uh, Talk, yeah, talk about a little bit about ourselves. Yeah, because I mean, as a Matt from Matt's perspective, he, it's not his story to tell, but he knows all about it. Like yeah. he he knows he knows more than I and you combined yeah, about like both gave, of our stories. <laughs> honestly, I gave him like all the stuff I just told you was all the stuff that I came up with, and yep. then he just and I was just like, you know what, Matt, you do the rest. You you right. got you figure out that other half that and just don't tell me anything about it. And he was really excited. So yeah, and it ties into what I did with and it ties into a bigger part of the story. So yeah, I mean, and I, I can't wait. Yeah, I, I'm so excited. It's oh, oof. can't wait, can't wait. But yeah, that'll that'll do it for us on fifty fifty. Uh, tune in next week where. Well, we don't really know what we're going to talk about. It's going to be something, and it's going to be D&D. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as always. We'll see you in the next one.